Trading Bitcoins. Today is Tuesday, July 23rd, 2013 at 4.05 p.m. in Paris, France. I'm using curb trading to acquire an inner market spread. Here today's Mad Bits. A sudden volume surge launches Bitcoin prices above the $95 barrier. It looks like we're going up. With a last of 96, a high of 97, a low of 90, with a volume at 21,635 and climbing. Dilbert Burtcoin series continues. I really hope he made a dozen of these. As I predicted yesterday, Ratbert is indeed mining for Burt coins, joined by his trusty companion, Bob the Dinosaur. Bad news for Ratbert though, Somali digital pirates. Why the only real way to buy bitcoins is on the streets. Another article by the Old World Media who's really excited that people are trading bitcoins in the park and allowing them to draw allusions to the founding of the 1792 stock exchange under a buttonwood tree, which is something the media understands, unlike bitcoin. Yeah, it's nice that people are trading in the streets, but let's talk about what they're really doing. They're avoiding taxes by trading bitcoins for cash, or in this case, silver coins. Ah, just like the stock traders of yore, romantic tax evasion. Speaking of romance, newlyweds to live off single bitcoin accepting sandwich shop in Provo for three months. Yes, it's that time again. Time to cover that exciting experiment. The two charming newlyweds in Provo, Utah, who must convince businesses to accept Bitcoin, because if they don't, they'll starve and have to move, etc., etc., blah, blah, blah. You know what I really don't like about this project? It's old world and boring. Yeah, yeah, it's impressive they raised money to shoot a documentary about it, and I'm sure it'll be neat in a few years when the VHS version of their documentary comes out and I can rent it at Blockbuster. Be kind, rewind. And as I'm fast forwarding through the trailers, watching those blurry lines fill the screen, you know what I'll be thinking to myself? They could have done this in real time on Twitter and YouTube, had actual chats with their audience in Google Plus Hangouts, and we could have tracked their progress online and even had a map of all the businesses they were trying to convince to accept Bitcoin. And what a great place to keep a log of their successes, as well as a way to influence businesses in real time. As I'm sure you all recall, after the Forbes Living on Bitcoin article started to come out, more businesses in San Francisco started accepting Bitcoin because of the articles. Lacking these real-time events, lacking daily YouTube videos, lacking even daily tweets or daily blog entries, I just find this project old world and boring, and likely to be edited into an hour and a half with uplifting violin music as they struggle to overcome the contest that they forced upon themselves because Austin likes Bitcoin whereas B-E-C-C-Y, that's not how you spell Becky, just heard about it. I guess the real contest is whether or not the stress caused by eating sandwiches every day bothers the young couple who only dated for three months, were engaged for six, and are now married. Wonder if that impressive nine-month streak of togetherness will outlast the 90 days of living on sandwiches. I sure hope they get a buy 10, get one free card at that sandwich shop. I have the feeling it would come in handy. Ha <laughs> ha This has been Mad Bitcoins. Mad Bitcoins? Mad Bitcoin.